So, good day class. So, today we're start our lesson again on uh, plumbing. So, most of the content here was this was taken from a review material. So, uh, for the licensure examination for architects. So, this will help you also in the near future. So, we're going to discuss this week about uh, pumps, heat valves, and some faucets. But I recommend also class that aside from our lectures that you read also, plumbing is uh, really important in our practice. Okay, so let's discuss, let's continue. So let's continue with the pump. So let's say a pump. So a pump is a device used to move fluids such as liquids or slurries. A pump displaces a volume by physical or mechanical action. So what do you mean by physical? Of course, there are there are pump when you're going to use your um, your own force, and then there's also what you call uh, pumping through mechanical action. So these are the general types of pumps. You have reciprocating pump, centrifugal pump, turbine pump, submersible pump, jet ejector pump, piston pump, and sump pump. Okay, so this is a sample of a reciprocating pump. So a reciprocating pump are those which cause the fluid to move using one or more oscillating pistons, plungers, or membranes or diaphragms. So this is the diagram class of a typical reciprocating uh, plunger. Okay, so just remember it's uh, what it looks like. Okay, so we don't need to get into the details as long as uh, you have a general idea. Okay. Then you also have this a centrif uh, centrifugal pump. So it is a rotodynamic pump that uses a rotating impeller to increase the pressure of a fluid. So centrifugal pumps are commonly used to move liquids through piping. Okay. So this is the example here. So you have the discharge nozzle and the suction nozzle. Okay. So this is where the fluid or slurry will be stuck and to be discharged here. So the details here, it's more on uh, the mechanical, but uh, just you need to familiarize it just in case that uh, you'll be coordinating with your clients or the mechanical engineer or sanitary engineer. Then you have what you call a turbine pump. So a turbine pump is a vertical turbine located below ground water levels and the driving motor located at the ground okay so take note class um take note that it uh, take note of this one and you'll be reviewing uh that it has a vertical turbine below ground water levels and the driving motor located at the ground so this is what a turbine pump uh, looks like this is a sample of its section okay then we also have a submersible pump um so it's basically a centrifugal pump complete with electric motors which are positioned underwater in a suitable board hole that delivers the water to the surface so this is one of the most common examples especially if you will be doing uh, uh, aquariums or artificial waterfalls so usually it uses submersible pumps this is generally what you can see in the market also Then you have what you call a jet ejector pump. So in the jet ejector pump fluid passes through a venturi nozzle and develops a suction that causes a second stream of fluid to be drained. Okay. So here is some motion of the fluid. This is a motive fluid nozzle. So it goes right here. This is the converging inlet. As you can see, it, it becomes smaller to build pressure. So this we call the diffuser flow okay. before, before it gets out. So if you look at this class, analyze the diagram, so it's small here. So you build pressure, so when it goes up, it goes to the outlet. The, um, the water pressure will be higher. Then you have what you call a piston pump. So this is a type of positive displacement pump where the high pressure seal reciprocates the piston. So piston pumps can be used to move liquids or compressed gases. So it has two uses. So you can use this to move liquids, or you can use this to compress. So when you say compress, you you're going to 
uh, what you call this, uh, you're going to try to confine the gases when you're compressing. When you're moving, uh, I think it's just reverse the physical displacement from one point to another. So it's a double acting piston pump. This is a single acting differential valve piston pump. Okay, so just take note. Then it's a double acting differential plunger piston pump. So here is a piston. So push here. This is the move. This will be the movement that it will follow. Then you don't need to um, memorize, but you have to familiarize yourselves with this. Because I think what will happen in the board exam is that we're going to show you a picture like this one or a diagram, then you're going to determine what type of pump it is. Then you have a sump pump, so it is used in applications where excess water must be pumped away from a particular area. And it's a pump used to remove water that has accumulated in a water collecting sump. So take note class, uh, when you study, um, always remember this sentence, so it's applications that it, it's space where there's excess water should be pumped away from a certain area. Okay, so for example, uh, we have under, underground car parks, of course, if it will get flooded, you need to pump the water away, or even you're in the basements uh, for residential buildings. Okay, let's go back to water supply and distribution system. So these are the water storage uh, for domestic use. So you have your overhead tank or your gravity supply tank. So I think you have an idea when you say gravity. So it uses the force of gravity to drive water. You have a cistern. Then you have the pneumatic water tank and the hot water tank. Okay, so I think you're familiar with this one so this is your overhead tank or gravity supply tank so it does not have any pressure concerns but relies on gravity to supply water to fixtures below okay so you don't have a problem with pressure because gravity already is a force which would uh, deliver the water to the different fixtures so this use an overhead feed system as you can see here you have to familiarize yourself with the diagram is your overflow pipe so when the water gets to a certain level it goes down to the drain and this is the in-house supply and this is a gate valve you open this to let the water uh, in okay then it also has a gate valve here in case you want to drain the water then you have a drip uh, pipe and a drip pan just in case There will be some spillage. Okay, so familiarize yourselves with the diagram class. Okay. So I'm trying to look in the diagram uh, where the water from the water district uh, uh, will be supplied. I couldn't see it here. Okay, so. But usually in uh, uh, and so tanks like this, uh, water is supplied from consistent water source. Okay. Then when it's already full, you can use this to uh, supply the other fixtures. Now, uh, why are you? How? Why do you need this one class, especially in residential buildings? It's because class. Uh, this is important, especially if you have a project and then. Uh, that house, for example, let's talk about the residential building. In that area, uh, if there's a problem on the shortage of water, so what you're going to do is store enough water um, in the tank so that when the time comes that the uh, user will use it, you have enough supply. Okay, so that's the advantage of having an overhead tank or a gravity supply tank. 
Then you have this, it's called a cistern. So a cistern is a waterproof receptacle for holding liquids, usually water. Often cisterns are built to catch and storing water. So cisterns are distinguished from wells by their waterproof lining. So modern cisterns range in capacity from a few liters to thousands of cubic meters, so effectively forming covered reservoir. Now cistern class, cisterns class, these are really important if you want to help alleviate the flooding. So what do you think is the problem in big cities? Okay, so almost everything is concretized. So if you're going to concretize an entire city, what will happen if there are no so, uh, areas or open, open areas, natural open areas? Of course, the water will. The water will just stay. So that so you'll have a lot of flooding. But if you design buildings with cisterns, you can help in uh, lessening less uh, less uh, helping um, lessening the floods in our urban areas because you'll be using the rainwater, the excess rainwater for your buildings. Okay, so what have you observed here in Cagayan de Oro? And I'm not sure if you have already uh, experienced, but back, you were already born this, uh, in that date, but back in 1998 uh, to year 2000, there are a lot of open areas near Limkitai. Okay, so it's usually open, then there, there are really few buildings. A few buildings back then. There was an, an occasion of a flood, as I remember during my high school days. But it's not as severe as what's happening right now. Because our city of Cagayan de Oro is getting more and more congested as it develops. So, uh, what we really need in our buildings is that gosh, we should recycle uh, rainwater. So, the good thing is that a lot of um, st uh, structures or buildings right now, they're already adapting and recycling uh, rainwater through cisterns. Okay. Then you have a pneumatic water tank. So these are typically horizontal pressurized storage tanks. Pressurizing this reservoir of water creates a surge Free delivery of stored water into the distribution system. Okay, so this is the, the riser, it's a pneuma, pneumatic tank. So here we have a pump, there's a gate valve, check valve, a suction pump. Okay, so it goes in the pneumatic tank, and air pressure is built. When you open this, uh, the water will flow to the different branches and risers. Okay, so remember, uh, just remember how to looks like then you have a water storage for domestic use this is a hot water tank versus a range boiler so it's an older type of domestic hot water heater which uses a separate hot water tank which is connected to the heating boiler as well as the domestic hot water piping in the home so it's made of galvanized steel sheet copper or stainless steel the standard working pressure Limit is 85 to 150 psi or pounds per square inch. Then you have the storage boiler, which is a large hot water tank, 60 to 130 centimeters in diameter with a maximum of 5 meters length. So it's made of heavy duty material sheets applied with a rust proof paint. The standard pressure limit is 65 to 100 psi. Okay, so now, class. Um, what we do, uh, what we usually do in residential projects is just is that we use to call this uh, electrical type of um, heaters. So we already we include uh, electric. Uh, we'll place the heater near the um, under under the sink, so so that when it's turned on. The water is immediately heated and it passes through the shower or to the faucet, depending if it's a multi-point type. Okay, but uh, the bad side is that it uses uh, 
that consumes too much electricity or right? So let's go to the types of valves. So valves are really important in passive of plumbing. So valves and controls a device that regulates the flow of fluid, gases, liquids, fluidized solids or slurries by opening, closing, or partially obstructing various passageways. So valves are technically pipe fittings, but are usually discussed as a separate category. So, in an open valve, fluid flows in a direction from higher pressure to lower pressure. So, these are the types of valves. You have what you call the gate valve, low valve, check valve, angle valve, the foot valve, and the safety valve. Okay? Then also familiarize yourselves with different standards for valves. You have the ISO or the International Standard Organization have the ASTM, American Society for Testing and Materials. You have ASME, American Society of Mechanical Engineers. You have the API, the American Petroleum Institute. You have the GIS, the Japanese Industrial Standard. Then DIN, which is a German. Uh, I don't know how to really pronounce it. Then the PNS, then the Philippine National Standards. Okay, so this is a sample of a gate valve. So, gate valve is a valve that opens by lifting a round or rectangular wedge out of the path of the fluid. So, the distinct feature of a gate valve is the sealing surfaces between the gate and the seats are planar. So, gate valves are often used in a straight line flow of fluid and minimum restriction is required. Okay, so this is a symbol for a gate valve. So this is the kind of valve that we usually use in residential uh, the plumbing uh, no, the water supply water distribution of uh, residential buildings here in the Philippines okay take note of the symbol class this is really important especially when you'll be doing your plumbing plans then you have what you call a globe valve so a globe valve is a type of valve used for regulating flow in a pipeline consisting of a movable disc type element and a stationary ring seat in a gener generally spherical body okay so this is the symbol so if you remember the gate valve so it's just like that it's like a ribbon with a e here here it's a globe valve, it's a ribbon with a circle and a T. So this is really important also, the symbol. So these are the different types. You have the plug type disc valve, conventional disc valve, and the composition disc valve. Then you have what you call a check valve. So a check valve is a mechanical device, a valve, which normally allows fluid, liquid, or gas to flow through in only one direction okay so meaning when a uh, fluid passes through it it only moves in a certain direction it won't allow fluid to backflow okay so this is the symbol so familiarize yourselves Let's check valve okay. usually in some of the plumbing diagrams um the triangle is, is no longer present so it's just like a like this and like a Z. Okay, so these are the different types. Swing check valve, lift check valve, vertical check valve, and horizontal check valve. Then you also have an angle valve. So it's a manually operated valve with its outlet opening oriented at right angles to its inlet opening used for regulating the flow of a fluid in the pipe. So generally cast, the purpose of valves is to regulate the flow of fluid within a pipeline. Okay. So you use this when you want to change in direction. Okay. So for example, you have a pipe going here, then it moves here, or you have a pipe uh, fluid moving here, and then it goes here. 
So it will really depend upon you as the designer, how you're going to design your plumbing system. Then you have a foot valve. So a foot valve is a type of valve that are placed at the pumps with well. So unlike other valves, a foot valve is created with a larger flow area than the actual pipe sides to make sure that there is less head loss. Okay, so this is the symbol. Then you have what you call a safety valve. So a safety valve is a valve mechanism for the automatic release of a substance from a boiler, pressure vessel, or other system when the pressure or temperature exceeds the set limits. So the key word here is safety valve then exceeds the set limits. Then for our last slide for this week, so let's talk about the types of faucet. Okay, so you have here what you call the compression cup. So it operates by the compression of a soft packing upon a metal sheet. Okay, so this is the section. So familiarize yourselves with the section. I think this is what uh, one of the common uh, uh, faucets that you can see in your homes. This one is key cup. So it operates with a round tapering plug around to fit a metal sheet. Okay. So this is the section of it. Then you have a ball faucet. So constructed with a ball connected to the handle. Okay. So you have here a ball. You need to rotate that to allow water to come in or out. Then you have what you call a hose bib, which is a water faucet made for threaded attachment of a hose. Okay, so this is our lesson for the week class. So I hope that you're going to review this um, because these are really important um, terminologies and diagrams which will be useful um, when you take your board exam someday and when you practice as architects, especially when you coordinate with your sanitary and um, sanitary engineers and master plumbers. So you have to, I um, mean, also your mechanical engineers. Just have to be familiarized with this one. Okay, so if you have any questions about our lecture for this week, don't hesitate to send an email or message me on Facebook because I'll reply as long as I'm online. Okay, so see you next meeting and I'm going to post the details of our activity for this week in our group page.